Last on Everdark, Julian convinced Damon to listen to what Elizabeth and Henry have to say, as both they and Damon are coming from a place of love. Damon, though, believes that Julian's heroic nature blinds him to the danger that this attachment to his old life will bring. Christian feels keenly his parents' displeasure, but he sees their shortcomings as they fail to understand the strength and depth of a master-fledgling bond. But just as Julian and Damon join the feast, they are interrupted by the appearance of an unexpected guest, Fiona Darksilver. Everdark, Episode 53, Phase. Balthazar, you must keep your temper, Arceus called out to him as the confessor hurried after him, his robes flapping about his legs in his haste to keep up. Keep my temper? Keep my temper? For Fiona? I think not. My dinner party is going like shit and Christian's parents hate me. Balthazar hissed as he stalked into the foyer. This is potentially a political meeting. Kaimorn may have sent her as an emissary. Arceus explained as he drew even with Balthazar. No, he did not. Balthazar growled. She was caught the first time he sent her to spy on us. There's no way he would send her back here after that kind of failure, unless his hope is that we'll give her a second death. Balthazar threw open the front doors, but no one was there. He staggered to a halt. Had the Vampire King been wrong? No. Fiona must have gone somewhere. Where is she? End of the driveway. At the edge of your property. Use your powers to find her mind, Iris. Damon suggested as he strode past him into the night air. I can't! I'm upset! Very upset! Balthazar bleated. He pointed back to the dining room. That is a bloody disaster that is only going to get worse after they discover we have their attempted murderers in the dungeon. I believe they may be upset that we even have a dungeon. Asius tapped his chin thoughtfully. Exactly! Disaster of epic proportions! He raked his hands through his hair. I had such plans of, of making the thorns like me and then revealing the truth. They would see how well I take care of their son and Julian and they would understand the boys were safe. They would be relieved, maybe even happy. You have met Elizabeth Thorne, haven't you? All right. Maybe I could have hoped that she wouldn't loathe me. That might have been an option if not for all the shit going on. The shit that Fiona is bringing with her. Balthazar's hands flew up like startled birds into the night air. You're being dramatic, Asius said. Yes, because this is a dramatic situation. Balthazar scowled at him. It is an emotional one. Damon responded dryly. You lost your temper too, so no judgment towards me, your majesty. Balthazar shook a finger at him. Damon snorted. I suppose not, Iros. You shouldn't be calling me that out loud. Balthazar frowned. But he was actually pleased on some level to be called that so companionably by the Vampire King, as if it was no big deal, as if they had been friends for ages. You need to accept who you are and embrace it. The time has come for that, Damon told him. Now, let us see this Vampire Confessor. I'm embracing. I'm trying to embrace it. When he saw the disbelieving looks on the other vampires' faces, he insisted, I'm working on it. I just haven't told the house, and I need to do that. But it's not quite the right time, and someone will take that opportunity away from you. Damon said simply, You know this. Control the moment, or it will control you. I guess I'm just hoping it doesn't ever come up, Balthazar admitted. It will, Damon responded with a faint smile. And when it does, you'll be glad you did it. It will help you. Are you using your seer gift, or just guessing? Balthazar asked. Arceus snorted. Which do you think? I know what I hope, Balthazar sighed. You must tell them, Iros. You must tell everyone and be who you truly are, Damon insisted. Damn, that does not improve my mood. Good thing I have Fiona to take apart. Balthazar. It was Arceus' turn to sigh. No, my mind is made up. I am taking her down. She spied on us. She saw the king naked. Everyone has seen Damon naked, multiple times. Arceus pointed out. Including the thorns. Yes, but they were welcome to see Damon. Fiona peeped. He now waggled a finger at Arceus. I care not that my body is seen. Damon was frowning. 
This was clearly perplexing to him. Right. Well, someone must be offended on your behalf. But enough of that. Fiona is our enemy. Let's go meet her. Balthazar grinned. Balthazar saw the shadowy figure of the confessor at the bottom of the drive. She was alone, so definitely not an emissary from Camorn. The preceptor did nothing without pomp and circumstance, which would have meant Fiona with a contingent of a dozen confessors at least. Sending a single confessor to this house to speak to Damon was not Camorn's style. She had on a long purple duster, with a hood that was flipped up as if to conceal her identity. He could hear the faint clack of the beads and her hair knocking together as her head jerked to look between the three of them. Balthazar reached for her mind, but it was such a jumble that he reared back from it. Something was very wrong, but that just sparked more anger in him. He didn't need this complication tonight. Balthazar, be politic. Arceus chided as they neared her. He then glanced back behind them. I'm surprised the boys are not out here with us. I told them to remain inside, Damon said. And they listened to you. It was Balthazar's turn to snort. Damon's chin lifted. Julian obeys me. When he wants to. Which means he's not obeying you at all, but instead just doing what he wants because he wants to. Which further means you're just lucky when it corresponds to what you've asked him to do, Balthazar retorted. A faint smile appeared on Damon's lips even though he kept the firm tone. Julian is a fierce spirit. I encourage his sense of self-determination. Yes, he is fierce. Christian and he both are. Balthazar, though, stopped talking about the two new fledglings as they approached Fiona. He wanted her to know nothing about him. She was fussing with the collar of her duster. But when they approached, two feet from her, she dropped her hands to her sides and straightened up. Balthazar? Lord Ravencroft, he corrected her. Everyone seemed to think that they could simply address him by his first name as if he were just some stripling. But there was a niggling thought that Damon would not insist on being called king, because he was a king no matter what. Balthazar still felt like he was holding on by his fingernails to be part of vampire society at all. He went on, We are not friends. Not anymore, if we ever were. And I'm pretty certain that on your side at least that you simply tolerate me while trying to convince Arceus at every opportunity, when I wasn't there, that he should dump me. Fiona did not- Don't defend her, Arceus. Her mind is a muddled mess. She's brought trouble with her, haven't you, Fiona? Balthazar snapped. She blinked. One hand fluttered up towards her collar again, but she forcefully put it down again to hang loose. Balthazar, we should try to begin as we mean to go on. Arceus sighed. Fiona- it is good to see you, but I do hope you've come here for a positive purpose. Her gaze, though, which had been everywhere but at Damon before, was now riveted on the vampire king. He stood between Balthazar and Arceus, directly opposite her. Her silver eyes widened and her lips parted as she took in the black-clad figure with that sweeping wolf coat. When she said nothing, Balthazar snapped. Didn't you see enough of King Damon when you were spying on my house before? Need to tell Camorn the color of his eyes? She blinked again, and her hands fisted at her sides. I am here without permission. Actually, it's worse than that. I am here against the preceptor's direct wishes. Oh my goodness! Fiona, breaking the rules? What will Daddy... Oh, I'm sorry. Camorn, say! Balthazar snarled. Do you expect us to clap or something? He got her attention with that, as her eyes narrowed and she retorted, That's so easy for you to say. Conforming for you would be a non-conformist thing. You've always been an outsider, and I want to be- I'm not an outsider, Balthazar shouted. His cheeks flamed with angry color. You've no idea, no idea about anything. What do you mean? She asked. What do I mean? He felt Damon's gaze on him and remembered the Vampire King's words that he needed to embrace who he truly was. Arceus's lips were tugged into a concerned frown. Balthazar felt out of control. He turned away from her, one hand raking through his hair and walked in a circle. He suddenly wanted to tell someone who he really was, but it was insane that it should be her. Yet wasn't he just wanting to do this? Because he wanted to prove to her that he was the ultimate insider, and she was nothing, not a reason to do it, or maybe the only reason to do it. 
To stop being an outsider, he had to admit who he was. Not just admit, but truly inhabit it. Stop trying to conform to what people believed of him and actually be who he was. His chest felt tight and he continued to pace in a circle. What to do? What to... Iros, Damon said quietly. Have you ever wondered about the business side of Wraith Rain? Or what Wraith does in her spare time? Or if the food in Dragon's Rain is actually real? The Wraith Rain team has a new podcast series, cheesily called The Wraith Rain Insider, where we talk about these kinds of backstage topics. If you're interested, you can find episodes of Wraith Rain Insider among the normal story content on iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast platforms. And you can find it in its own playlist on YouTube. Our topics come directly from our readers and listeners. If you want us to discuss anything, just let us know in the comments. Balthazar stopped dead in his tracks and closed his eyes. He relished that name on Damon's lips. The Vampire King was his friend, a good friend, not in spite of who he was or what he had done, but because of it. I, Rose. Fiona sounded amused. What is this all about? He already knows the nickname that you want people to call you. Balthazar opened his eyes and turned to the Vampire King. I thought I was supposed to be the one to tell people first, Damon. You just needed a little nudge. Damon's lips were curled into a knowing smile, and in that moment, Balthazar felt like a weight had been lifted. He was over two hundred years old, the lord of a house. Yes, he was an exile, but it had been for a good cause. But this, this moment of being Damon's friend, of being Iros, meant that he wasn't an outsider. He was an insider. He was the ultimate insider, and he needed to stop acting like he didn't belong, but accept that he did. And with that power came responsibility. I have to keep you safe, Balthazar suddenly said to Damon. The Vampire King's eyebrows lifted slightly, but his smile increased. Balthazar patted the air between them as he quickly amended. I mean, I know that you really don't need help exactly. Not like you're in need of physical rescuing. I mean, you're our king. And I am, I am your friend, and your faithful. Oh, God, I'm going to say it. Yes, I am your faithful servant. The word did catch in his mouth a little, but he pressed on. I'll deal with Fiona. Arceus and I will deal with this, won't we, Arceus? Arceus nodded, and there was this dawning understanding on his face. He beamed at Balthazar. Yes, of course we will. Please go in and be with Julian and the others. We'll handle this and report to you anything of interest, my king, Balthazar said. Damon put a hand on his shoulder and squeezed it. I am relieved. I will see you inside, old friend. And then he turned with that ridiculous and yet incredibly cool wolf coat on and swept back towards the house. Old friend. Old friend. I am his old friend. Wait. I am here to see the king, not you and Arceus. I need to speak to King... Fiona cried. Fiona? It was Arceus who answered her. Damon is the king. Even if you were of a rank that could simply speak with him, you serve the vampire who's gone against him. You're lucky to even speak to us. What? She sounded incredulous. I should be honored to speak to Balthazar. Iros, Balthazar said as he focused on her instead of Damon's retreating form. You can't be serious. Iros? Your nickname? She scoffed, her eyes huge and her head shaking. It's not my nickname. It's my name, he clarified calmly. 
It was amazing that he felt no need to convince her. He felt her mind in his hands, and he knew the moment when she realized he was serious, and he knew the moment that she believed him, despite herself. No, that's impossible. You're... Well, you're in exile, and I remember you being turned and... Iros reborn. Literally, he spread his arms to his sides. Damon recognized me during a blessing, and, well, the nickname was right all along. You're not so much surprised as you are afraid. That's interesting. Another immortal? She breathed and looked down at the ground as if she felt it moving beneath her feet. Arceus covered his hands with his robe as he gripped his forearms in that way he had. There is at least one other immortal who exists currently. Her head snapped up, confusion reigning in her silver eyes. What? Who? Kali, Balthazar told her. No. She breathed. No. Who is it? Who is Kali? Someone we know, or... That is actually an excellent question. We know it's not Kamon, but it's someone behind him, pulling his strings and trying to take over, Balthazar said, and he had great satisfaction adding, The people who claim to be so damned scared of Damon taking over? Well... It's not because they care about vampires being allegedly enslaved by him, but because they'll lose power. How can you know this? Because he told you? She pointed towards the house where Damon had already disappeared into. No, because fucking Callie stole Heath's spirit. Damon was going to bring him back and Callie took him. Balthazar snapped, his eyes blazing so much that Fiona drew back from him. But the immortals all died in the war. Iros did, but now he, I mean, I am back. But Callie didn't die at all. Sophia says that Seer is still alive somewhere too. And Damon explained that immortals don't die like other people in any case. They come back if you kill them at all, so all of them could be here. He thought on that for long moments. All of the immortals could be alive right now. Some of them might know who they are, and some, like me, might not know. But this idea that the immortals are gone and not having an effect on us is bullshit. That's more of a fairy tale than the Order's texts. You think Callie is controlling the Order? She put a hand on her chest, telling her this wasn't important. He could blank her mind, though he had no intention of allowing her to leave and go back to Camorn. What she knew would die here but it was then that he caught sight in her mind of humans, dazed and chained walking through the square before the spire. The image was so strong that he rocked back on his heels. Blood slaves at the spire, Balthazar asked. How did you... Fiona began. I'm Iros. Your mind is an open book to me, especially when you're screaming out thoughts like that, he snapped. Are there blood slaves in solace? That would be sacrilege. That would be against everything the Order believes in. Arceus' thick brows drew together. That would be... Happening. Right now. All right, Fiona, you came here to talk. You're going to talk to us. Inside. Balthazar grasped her arm. She immediately moved to yank it out of his grip, but a light touch on her mind had her unable to move on her own at all. Those silver eyes went huge. No. She breathed. You can't. You can't control... Control you. I can make you do a jig. Even before I knew who I was, I could do that. But now, now that I'm embracing my true self, I'm pretty sure I could have you gut yourself while standing in the sunlight and smile. His voice dropped into the arctic level. He felt Arceus's dismay at his darkness. You don't understand, Arceus. She's still conflicted even after all she's seen. It's not just blood slaves. There's more, much more. I could feel it. Yet she's still not fully on board with us. Arceus's jaw worked. What more? We'll get it all out of her inside. Arceus, you've got the real deal. King Damon, it doesn't matter what else the Order does or believes. You know the truth, Balthazar reminded him. Balthazar gripped the Confessor's right arm as he sensed that his friend felt a growing sense of despair. This had been there at the back of Arceus's mind for some time, beneath the glory of Damon, the worry that the Order had been on the wrong track. Arceus shook his bear-like body. Whatever she says will not disturb my faith, but I think it will hurt my heart. 
Tell him to release me, Hasius. Fiona attempted to wriggle. Tell him! I will tell him no such thing. You must be interrogated. We must know what you know, Asius said. We will keep our king safe from people. People who would seek to harm him. Not that he couldn't destroy his enemies with a thought, but yes, you'll do it for him, Balthazar said, not wanting her to think Damon was weak in any way. The three of them walked back to the house. Fiona was begging Arceus not to let Balthazar control her like she was some kind of marionette. I need to speak to Damon, she explained. I need to know his intentions towards vampire and humankind. Surely you worry about that too. King Damon, and no, we do not worry about it. We know the king's character. Arceus said, though, without heat. Balthazar hid his smile. He'd never seen Arceus correct her. He is really, really our king, then? She asked, her voice trembling. Her body would have too, if he would have allowed it. Why ask questions to which you already know the answer? Balthazar asked her as he opened the front doors and she walked in, unable to stop herself. She wanted to grab the doorframe, rather like a cat would stretch out its paws not to be placed in a cat carrier, but her arms didn't even twitch from her sides. I saw him when he was... The tendrils. She got out. Communing. Arceus explained. He draws power from the earth. What? Not just blood? She sounded both frightened and intrigued. There's much we don't know about him yet. It would not be proper to pepper him with questions. Arceus's voice lightened as it always seemed to when he spoke of Damon. Do you know more, Balthazar? Considering your... your... Iros? He liked how it sounded. No, I don't remember everything yet. Remember? It comes in waves, just a few memories at a time. He thought of the memory, vision, dream, where others had turned to dust before him as he had walked unconcernedly over the battlefield. Then he shook his head. But that's not your concern. Did you know, Arceus, who he is? Is that why you... you chose him? She asked. Chose me? You make it sound like we're lovers, Fiona. Balthazar laughed. Aren't you? She challenged. No, Arceus answered gently. Balthazar is like a son to me, or more, a fledgling to me. Balthazar had always guessed this, but it had never been spoken. Now he felt a warm glow sweep through him. He wished he could tell Arceus how that made him feel, but he did not wish to in front of Fiona. All he could say was, that is... That is what I feel as well. Then I'm honored, Asios answered, and there was a broad smile beneath that bushy beard. They were at the far end of the living room, heading towards the hallway that led to the stairs that went well past the bedrooms and the catacombs to a place that, until last night, he'd never had to use. Now there would be three occupants. He was feeling practically medieval with all his prisoners. Sophia suddenly skidded into view and came over to them. She stopped in front of them, her hands behind her back, swaying back and forth. Oh, Balthazar, I had a place setting put out for Fiona, she said sweetly. For a moment, he forgot that she wasn't a child and stammered, Uh, oh, S Sophia, that's, that's so sweet, but, uh, we aren't bringing her into the dining room. We need to question her. Yes. Sophia smiled brightly. You will, at the table, while she's eating. She likes prime rib, too. Her father made it for her for her birthday, and oh, I'll let her tell you that story. Sophia pinked and put a hand over her mouth as if the words had just hopped out. She's, she's our prisoner, Sophia, Balthazar finally said. Only for now, Sophia told him. Until what happens? What will change that? Arceus asked her intently. When you treat her as she would have treated you, Sophia answered simply. When you show her what true family is, then, well, then she'll see. The Order is my family. Fiona raised her head up proudly. Then I will be wrong and you will have a delicious dinner. Sophia answered with a bob of her head. But if I'm right... Her gaze became that of someone ancient. If I am right, then I will see my mistress soon. Seer? How does Fiona have anything to do with your mistress? Balthazar asked, baffled. Sophia's smile was almost sly. <laughs> she didn't tell you how she got past the locked gates, did she? Balthazar glanced at Fiona. 
Her expression was curiously blank. She phased between the Everdark and here, Sophia said. And she'll be able to phase us to Solus, where my mistress is. Join us next time for episode 54, I Am King. You know what's really great? Our sponsors. Who are you guys? Without your support, we wouldn't be able to produce this multi-actor podcast and any of our upcoming projects, some Everdark related, some not Everdark related. Because of you, we don't have to spend all of our time on social media or rely on mysterious algorithms that change from week to week. Instead, we can simply produce the best content we can and keep the new episodes coming every week. If you'd like to support us, the best way is to become a member of WraithRain.com. That is my serial website with everything but the Amazon exclusive stuff published on it. Not only do you get the uncut and uninterrupted episodes of Everdark, but you can read over 115 chapters of the sequel, Everdark Academy, and all my other written gay romantic stories, both ongoing and completed. Follow the link in the notes to sign up. The Everdark Podcast by X Aratare is performed by Edward Fox, Adam Riley, Jay Thelis, Bruno Devant, Kelly Michaels, and Hannah Hart, with Liz Gentle as Seer, edited by Matthew Prince, continuity by Adriel Wiggins. Everdark is produced by Wraith Rain Publishing in association with Her Grace Reed Studios. Copyright 2022 by Wraith Rain Publishing.